In this pencast, we're going to look at the solutions to Thursday night's homework on rational equations. Now, remember from class, solving rational equations involves two basic strategies depending on the form of the original equation. The first one being the application of the means extremes property, better known as cross multiplying. And the other one involves multiplying through by the LCD. As a reminder, when you have this form that we see in this example, you have a proportion. By definition, a proportion is an equation showing two fractions equal. When you have this form, your middle school experience in cross multiplying will serve you well. We know that if this is true, I should put an if here, comma, then, <coughs> excuse me, the product A times B is equal to the product B times C. And depending on what that product involves, then you would proceed to solve it using other algebraic strategies we've learned this year. The equation here in number three definitely shows a proportion form, so I think it's probably a good idea to bracket the anything that is a sum or difference so you don't blow the distribution when you cross multiply. Other than that, it's about as straightforward as you would hope. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking at this, we could say that product AB equals 4 times quantity x plus 6. I was thinking a, so I wrote an a instead of a 4. And the product b times c would be 5 times 2x. The parentheses on the 2x is, of course, optional. Never hurts. Um, from here, like I said, depending on what results from the cross multiplication, that will dictate what to do next. This one is a straight up linear equation. There's no second degree x term, so there's no quadratic strategies needed. It's basically last semester. So distribute the four, getting four x plus 24. Five times two x would give you 10 x, whoops, 10 x. Now isolate the variable, 24 equals six x, multiply through by one sixth, four equals x. Nothing interesting happening here once you apply the means extremes property. This one again is in the A over B equals C over D, the proportion form, which involves cross multiplying, AKA applying the means extremes property. I suppose the only difference between this one and the first one is the slightly increased complexity with binomial denominators. So I would bracket those again, protecting you from a distribution mistake, and then proceed with the cross multiplication. So product AD would be 6, quantity x plus 1. Product BC would be 9, quantity x minus 1. Stop, look at that. You're pretty well assured that you're not going to get any x squared term. No quadratic methods needed. Distribution, isolate, done. Let's see how that plays out. 6x plus 6 equals 9x minus 9. Let's subtract 6x from both sides. 6 equals 3x minus 9. Now let's add 9 to both sides. 15 equals 3x. Multiplying through by 1 third, I get 5 equals x. Easy. Well, students would call it easy. Teachers would call it boring. Taking a look at this one, it definitely is in the A over B equals C over D form, so cross multiplication is in order. Um, looking at the increased complexity, we know that this product here that we would call the BC product is a product of two binomials, better known as uh, foiling necessary. Here, let's group the denominator, again, to protect yourself against an incorrect distribution and cross multiply. So x quantity x minus one, equals quantity x minus 5 times quantity 2x plus 7. Now it should be very, very clear what's going to happen. We're going to foil out the right side, which will give us an x squared, actually a 2x squared. We're going to foil out the left side, which will give us an x squared, along with other stuff, of course. The x squareds will not cancel out, so you're going to be left with x squareds remaining. So you know it's a quadratic method involving setting it equal to 0 and then factoring or quadratic formula. So with the, the idea that once the, the cross multiplication takes place, even if you don't distribute or FOIL, you can tell what's going to happen just based on the form of what results. So distributing this x squared, we have this first, outer, inner, last. Um, before we isolate and put it into quadratic form, let's combine like terms. 
that should give us negative, sorry, minus 3x minus 35. Uh, the 2x squared is positive, so everything goes right. 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 35. Now the x squared, this one right here, came from subtracting 1x squared from both sides, and this minus 2x came from adding x to both sides. In both cases, we were moving terms left to right. Here, um, there's no need to do the quadratic formula. We can mentally factor this. Uh, product AC is negative 35, factors of negative 35, whose sum is negative 2, are negative 7 and positive 5. And that is about as quick as that goes. So x minus 7, x plus 5. Just let's pause and double check, do a little mental foiling. Yes, life is good. Don't know if you need this final step, the multiplication property of 0. x equals 7 and x equals negative 5. Now remember, you are not allowed to circle those and put in a happy face until you double check for zero denominators, which we do not. This denominator would require a negative 7 halves x value, and this denominator would require a 1, an x value of 1 for a zero denominator. Neither of those we have, so we get to keep both solutions. And I can fit the happy face right inside. Little introduction needed for this one. Again, a over b equals c over d form, cross multiply. You can see the quantities as numerators and denominators, so it is definitely advisable to bracket those up. Uh, you can see one cross multiplication is going to give you an x squared. The other cross multiplication is going to give you a 2x squared. So this one's going to play out remarkably similar to the last one. Uh, let's go for it. Product AD would be 2 quantity x squared minus 3 equals product BC, which would be quantity x minus 3 times quantity x plus 2. And when we stop and look at that, we see exactly what's going to happen, virtually identical to the last problem, except looking at my quadratic coefficient, we're going to move all the terms right to left. Once that's said, everything is just bulldoze. 2x squared minus 6 equals first, x squared, outer, plus 2x, inner, minus 3x, last, minus 6. Don't do anything until you combine like terms on the right. That's going to be minus x minus 6. Now, as said, 2x squared is positive. That means take all your right-hand terms and move them left. <coughs> Excuse me. Subtracting x squared gives me x squared. Adding x to both sides gives me plus x. And adding 6 to both sides gives me 0. Now I'm there. No reason, no reason at all to use the quadratic formula. We can simply factor an x out, giving me x plus 1. And as long as I have a product... <clears throat> excuse me, equaling zero, I can set each factor equal to zero, and those will give me my two solutions. x equals zero, x equals negative one. Stop to double check for zero denominators, which we do not get. Therefore, sort of a crazy circle there. Got it? Still room for my happy face. You should see that this form is different than all the other ones. We do not have two fractions. We have three, and if you don't want to use the F word, you can say we have three rational numbers. Since we are dealing with rational numbers, let's first of all write everything in rational form. So 3 over 2 plus 1 over x equals 2 over 1. Now we're there. As said from the examples in class on Thursday, we need to identify the LCD first. The LCD is clearly... 2x, so I can identify that as 2x. Once we have the LCD identified, we group the entire equation and multiply through by the LCD over 1. Each time we distribute it here and here and here, you are going to get simplifications that will leave the denominators 1. So in essence, you're clearing fractions. So this one here, we'll try to do this no, actually, I can't. So let's do this. 2x over 1 times 3 over 2 plus 2x over 1 times 1 over x equals 2x over 1 times 
2 over 1. There we go. Now let's see what we got. That illustrates what the distribution looks like before the canceling. If you try to do it all together, there's too much writing, too many colors, you won't be able to follow anything. So the distribution looks like this, and then start simplifying the denominator. The denominator's in the black. <coughs> that do simplify out, leaving you, this will give me 3x plus 2 equals 4x. Of course, I had no simplification on the right-hand side with denominators being 1. That should be obvious. And again, the form of the equation is linear, first degree. Just isolate the variable by uh, subtracting 3x, and I think we're home free. 2 equals x. Boom. Circle it. Just double-check for zero denominators. No. Life is good done. So you're pretty much assured, unless you have a proportion, aka an equation showing only two fractions equal, then you're in the multiply through by the LCD uh, category. So this one clearly has more than three fractions or more than three rational numbers, depending on your choice of vocabulary. And I'm going to write them all in rational form. And all that means is everything gets a denominator. So 3x over x. All right, so pause. Let's find the LCD. I think we can find that quickly. That should be product x times quantity x minus 4. Let's double check before we continue. Yes, that is the LCD. So let us group the entire equation and multiply through by that LCD. Whoops, I wrote 14. I don't know why. 4 over 1. That's it. We're going to distribute three times. And let's go ahead and show that distribution and not do the canceling in our head. So I get x quantity x minus 4 over 1 times that fraction, which would be 3 over x minus 4. And you know what? I'm going to group my binomial denominator just because it's good. Same thing, x minus 4 over 1 times 4 over 1. We know what's going to happen there or not happen because you have a, a 1 denominator. And then x, x minus 4 over 1 times 3x over x. Now let's start looking for simplification. This entire binomial goes, as does that one. Good. Nothing happens with these ones like we said. That x goes, that x goes. Now multiply through, and you're really just looking at the numerators because all the denominators are either 1, if it's the LCD, because we put it over 1, or the existing denominators from the original equation have already simplified out. So if done right, you won't have to do anything with the de denominators. Excuse me. So 3x plus x quantity x minus 4, and then there's my 4, equals x minus 4, 3x. Now I just wrote it in the order that it occurred as you multiplied straight across. So now we have that mess. You know you have to distribute. You can't do anything with parentheses. So let's do it. 3x plus x squared minus 4x times 4 equals 3x squared minus 12x. Yes, you could have distributed both of these together. I just didn't want to lose anybody. <clears throat> excuse me, 3x plus, now this 4, and I'll just mark that there, 4x squared minus 16x equals 3x squared minus 12x. Uh, let's not do anything until we combine like terms. And I get 4x squared um, minus 13x equals 3x squared minus 12x. Uh, clearly, we're moving everything from right to left, so subtracting 3x squared leaves me x squared, and then adding 12x leaves me just minus x equals 0. As with the last one, it's not really a quadratic method, let's just factor. x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 0 x equals positive 1. Let's double check and guess what we see. Do you see it? Should I pause for dramatic effect? This denominator is an x and you cannot have a zero denominator so that one goes bye-bye and this one is my only legitimate solution. Got it. 
Again, very similar to the last one, I do not have to, uh, an equation, excuse me, showing two fractions equal, so I'm not in cross-multiplying form. You already know what I'm about to do. I'm going to write it in rational form, which really means giving the four a denominator. x plus four plus four over one equals two x plus two over x minus one. Next step would be to identify the LCD. I'm looking at all my denominators. Tell me you see that the LCD is quantity x plus 4 times quantity x minus 1. That looks good. Once we have the LCD identified, we group the entire equation and multiply through by that LCD expressed over 1. Distribute, distribute, distribute. Now, if you don't mind, in the interest of time and preserving so much writing, uh, let's do the cancellation mentally. So perhaps I should change these arcs and make them color-coded so we can follow them. So the first distribution will be blue, the second distribution will be green, and the third distribution will be purple. That way we can follow them along. So the blue, and I'm going to group that in parentheses and group that. Although I should have grouped that in purple, but I'm over it. So quantity x plus 4 simplifies out, leaving me just the 6x and the x minus 1. Now I'm going to add to that. Nothing happens with my 4, so the 4 is just there. The entire least common denominator is multiplied by that 4 equals... Now the binomial x minus 1 simplifies out, leaving me x plus 4 times 2x plus 2. All right, now we got some work to do here. Let's be careful. Uh, let's do everything in red again now. So distribute the 6x, giving me 6x squared minus 6x. I'm going to do a little bit of foiling here. This is going to give me x squared plus 3x minus 4, and now I'm going to distribute the 4 in here. And that will give me plus 4x squared plus 12x minus 16 equals, let's foil out this, 2x squared. Outer inner would give me 8, and 2 is 10, plus 10x plus 8. Life is good. We're doing no... Um, deciding what side or anything until we combine like terms. So I have 10x squared. That's these two combined. And now I have plus 6x, which are those two combined. And then minus 16 is by itself. Nothing happening here. Uh, and now we have 10x squared on the left, 2x squared on the right. So everything goes from right to left. <coughs> <clears throat> Subtracting the 2x squared gives me 8x squared. Subtracting the 10x would give me minus 4x. And subtracting the 8 would give me minus 12 equals 0. Now, again, we saw these in class. The adventurous would go ahead and multiply AC, get negative 96, and go from there. So I don't want to do that. I think I want to multiply through by 1 fourth. A very much last semester strategy, multiply through by one fourth. I will get 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Much nicer to work with. Um, I'm going to factor this mentally. And how many times did I say this? If you cannot mentally factor, then don't use product AC. So I got to have 3 and 1. So I think the 3 is going to go here. That's going to be minus. Plus 1 goes there. That's going to pair with the 2. Let's just double check. There's my 2x squared. There's my minus 3. And my outer inners do give me the negative x, which I have. Skipping the multiplication property of 0, x is going to give me 3 halves. And x is going to give me negative 1. Up top, double checking for zero denominators, I do not see a problem, so I get to keep both solutions. All right. Uh, again, the, the form should be clear. We're multiplying through by the LCD. I think the challenge on this one is to identify the LCD. Um, while you're looking at that and deciding what the LCD is, I'm going to rewrite it over here in the center more. So I have, oops. 
this is going to give me x squared minus 3x, that's fine, minus 6 over x minus 3 equals 5 over x. I almost hinted at what the LCD was. That's why I didn't want to write it that way. Did you find out what it is? It is x quantity x minus 3 because this factors to quantity x, x minus 3, which are the other two unique bases on the other two denominators. So keeping that in mind and keeping the fact that this factors that way, group the entire equation. In fact, I'm going to do that so we don't get that confused there. And least common denominator over 1, 3 distributions, canceling out 3 times. The first distribution, the entire denominator cancels out, so I'm left with just the numerator, numerator excuse me, 18, minus 6, just the binomial, x minus 3 simplifies out, leaving me the x, so it's actually minus 6x, equals, now the x simplifies out, leaving me 5, quantity x minus 3. Fortunately for us, we do not have an x squared, so it's a linear strategy. It's really isolating the x. Let's distribute this and see what's best. Minus 15. Um, yeah, let's add 6x to both sides. 18 equals 11x minus 15. And now let's add 15 to both sides. That would give me, what's that, 33 equals 11x, and then multiply through by 1 11th, 3 equals x. Now let's look at our denominator. That's our only solution. You might already see what's going on, nice and interesting. The 3 would give us a 0 denominator here and here. So yeah, no way, no chance, no how. So we have an equation that looks good and the algebra looks good, but the final solution is that there is no solution. You could do x equals zero with a slash through it. That's the mathematical term for the empty set or the null set or undefined, however you wanna do it. That's the correct conclusion. So yeah, more interesting happenings with these as the complexity increases. This one's got the LCD handed to you on a silver platter, but while you're deciding on what it is, I am going to rewrite it over here in the center, leaving me a little more room. And did you get the LCD? Good, I got it too. X quantity, X plus six. Let me double check that that's right. Yep, group. LCD over 1, x plus 6 over 1, three separate distributions. Let's see what happens. Before we start, let's do that. All right, so the x plus 6 on the first distribution simplifies out, leaving me the x and the x plus 1 in the numerator, plus the x simplifies out, leaving me x plus 6 equals, and the binomial x plus 6 simplifies out, leaving me x, 2x plus 1. Everything's good. You should be able to see that this will give me a 2x squared. That will give me a 1x squared. So I'm sure we're going to distribute everything out and move terms left to right. But let's double check that we're correct. x squared plus x plus x plus 6 equals 2x squared plus x. Don't do anything until you combine like terms x squared plus 2x plus 6 equals 2x squared plus x, which we knew, or which we thought was going to happen. All the terms left to right. Subtract x squared, giving me x squared. Now subtract the 2x, giving me minus x. And now subtract the 6, giving me minus 6. It's actually a very common factorable quadratic form that we've seen before, and that's going to give me x minus 3 x plus 2. My solutions will be x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Double check for zero denominators. Nope. Life is good. And a happy face. All right. Uh, last one. I think all the fun is gone. This one does not look interesting at all. But let's rewrite it over here in the center. Give us a little room. Put it all in rational form. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Bracket that. It's always a good idea. And now let's pause and identify the LCD. I know what it is. Do you? 
it is x quantity x plus 3. Bracket the equation x quantity x plus 3 over 1, 3 distributions. Now I see what the interesting part is on this one. Do you? It is this. So um, let's go ahead and do the first distribution mentally. The x's cancel out, leaving me x. Sorry, I said x, and I wrote the 5. Leaving me 5 quantity x plus 3 minus x, x plus 3. So the, the only thing that's going to happen is we need to make sure to distribute that minus with that product. And while we're at it, let's put in the 2 that I forgot equals, okay, binomial x plus 3 simplifies out, leaving me 2x, x plus 3. Let me double check. Oh, <laughs> I'm losing my mind. The x plus 3 canceled out, leaving me just the 2 and the x. Okay, now that's better. Uh, we know what to do. We can almost tell what we're going to see. 5x plus 15 minus 2x squared minus 6x equals 2x. Don't do anything till we combine like terms. Minus 2x squared. What's that going to be? Minus x plus 15 equals 2x. Uh, move everything from left to right because we want a positive a. So add 2x squared to both sides, leaving me that. Add x to both sides, which gives me that. Sorry. 3x and now subtract the 15 from both sides, giving me that. All right, this might require um, actual AC factoring, but because 2x squared is prime, I'm going to do it in my head. Product AC is negative 30. The numbers that I need the outer inners to combine to would be uh, nothing because there are no factors of negative 30 whose sum is positive 3. Grr. Let's verify that by looking at the discriminant. Remember the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Uh, b is 2, 4, so discriminant equals 129. I'd like to let you think I did that in my head, but I just did it in my calculator. So discriminant's 129, therefore... Uh, it's not a perfect square. That means this trinomial is not factorable. But that does not mean that my solutions do not exist. That simply means I got to go quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus root d all over 2a, which in this case would be negative 3 plus or minus root 129 all over 4. There is no way you are going to get a zero denominator with any either of those solutions because they're both irrational. So I'm just going to call it done. Everything else looks good. I think we've seen every variety before we move on to word problems. So we're done with the entire set. Tori out.